So welcome back to GSC Live here at the Global Spine Congress in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm absolutely pleased to be joined by two very distinguished gentlemen, Steve Lewis, Justin Smith. Why don't you introduce yourself, tell the audience a little bit about yourself and your practice. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Um, I'm Stephen Lewis. I'm from uh, Toronto. We work at the uh, Toronto Western Hospital as well as the Hospital for Sick Children. I'm currently the uh, chair of the uh, Knowledge Form Deformity Group and I've been really fortunate to be working with uh, such a distinguished uh, group of surgeons. Uh, we've been able to uh, uh, start really some great projects and really interested in uh, moving things forward with that. So it's been really a pleasure. Uh, Very good. Justin? Uh, Justin Smith. Uh, I'm a neurosurgeon at the University of Virginia. Uh, I'm the newest member of the steering committee for AO uh, Knowledge Forum Deformity, and I've enjoyed working on projects with uh, distinguished colleagues like Steve Lewis and others in the past, and I'm looking forward to more projects going forward and getting more associates involved in the Knowledge Forums. So what we have here are the viewers who are online for the Global Spine Congress, and you guys are the first Knowledge Forum to come in and do an interview with us, so thank you for your time. Steve, start off by just telling the audience, because not everyone here is a member of AO Spine. A lot of them he heard the, the word Knowledge Forum, but they don't exactly know exactly what it is. Can you just, in a nutshell, explain what the Knowledge Forums are? So, uh, originally, AO has been really strong about disseminating knowledge. Great educational uh, platforms, uh, teaching all over the world, and really have set the standard in orthopedic and, and spine teaching uh, around. And then they said, you know what? Why don't we make new knowledge? Why are we just talking about everybody else's knowledge? And so the, the, that was uh, Louis Vialli's vision of creating knowledge and set up groups of specialized um, specialties such as tumor, uh, degenerative, trauma, uh, and deformity, of course, for spine. And using that, we were supposed, our, our mandate was to create new knowledge, uh, trying to answer questions that needed to be answered, uh, for, for example, for deformity. We look at questions are, should older patients actually undergo spinal deformity surgery? Uh, how do you interpret monitoring changes during surgery when, when the nerve monitoring goes down? Things that really need answers that only we can do in a very uh, global manner with international centers and, and with the support of the AO. So it was, a, it was a really a vision to create new knowledge and so that the educational group can teach the things that we're actually bringing on. Great. Now, Justin, why don't you tell us specifically about the Knowledge Forum Deformity? How is it set up? Who's, who's are sort of the members? Who's the leaders? Things like that. Well, Steve, Steve is actually the uh, current uh, leader, right? Uh, but there's a steering committee, there's a leader, and then there's a steering committee that really kind of oversees the projects. And then there are associate members, and which is a great opportunity to get involved in the, in, in the Knowledge Forums. There are a group of associate members, and then all together the group uh, comes up with ideas for studies, and then uh, AO and all the resources that are available through AO help us execute those studies in a, in a, in a very efficient um, a, a way to, that answers those questions. Um, so that's, that's really how they're set up. Steve, how many people are in the Knowledge Forum Deformity? So uh, originally we had 10 members, uh, the founding members, and uh, over time uh, the 10 members have really done a, a terrific job, but uh, we're trying to bring in new blood and changing people over and we uh, transitioned some of our old uh, original members out into uh, kind of a supervisory role and we're bringing in new members uh, to try to inje inject new blood into our group. Uh, we have very incredible uh, people, the founding leaders for our group with Kenneth Chong and uh, Larry Lenke, both ex-presidents of the Scoliosis Research Society. Sure. Uh, Chris Shaffrey who's going to be uh, president of the SRS uh, as well as Dave Pauley. Uh, Sig Bourbon, uh, Young Chu, um, uh, Manabel Ito uh, was our original member from Japan, and Marinus de Kluver are also uh, various uh, affiliated with the Scoliosis Research Society. So it's a very strong uh, group of key opinion leaders, and uh, we're transitioning the group off. We have Ahmet Alane as well, who's one of our original uh, members uh, from Turkey. And so we really have a, a group of international surgeons that have led uh, the charge, giving us projects that have allowed us to bring this international flavor uh, with key world leaders of deformity surgery. Sure. Uh, so, so you've got a collection of just amazing names. I mean, the names you just named off are just a who's who of spine deformity. Um, how many projects do you guys have ongoing at the current time? So we, we try to mix up 
uh, long projects that take a few years with shorter projects. Um, so, for example, our, our key big projects, our first one, our original one, was Scoli Risk. And the Scoli Risk really was to, uh, you know, we, we see everybody showing a 1% rate of neurologic deficits, and we're doing these big deformity tests, and we probably have 1% a week. So we were concerned that, you know, uh, this probably isn't, isn't accurate. And so uh, we took a mandate of, of finding our complex cases and really finding a, a true neurologic deficit rate on these complex cases. So that was one of our key uh, first studies and, and really was an eye-opener to see what, really what true data is. And then we said, you know what, can 60-year-old can patients go through surgery like this? And then so that was our next study and we had great results showing uh, very, very positive uh, with 12 centers around the world. Um, and then our next big project was the neuromonitoring study, which is going to be closed now. And in the middle, we've thrown in some other ones on how to do radiographs for deformity surgery, how to classify patients for deformity. Uh, and then we, we're adding this a new big study, uh, which is the multi-rod study, to see how, whether uh, two rods is enough or really multiple rods will, will show better benefit for our patients. So we've been able to mix in these short projects with these big projects and really have a pipeline of uh, creating this new knowledge. So Justin, it sounds like you're the newest steering committee member, which makes me assume that you were sort of a regular Knowledge Forum member before. Uh, I started out by getting involved in some AO projects, Knowledge Forum projects from the outside, uh, expressing interest and mm -hmm. Um, helping uh, write papers and work on those projects as an outsider, if you will. And then I came on as an associate member and continued to work with the group and show them my interest and propose ideas. And then eventually I was brought on as a, as a steering committee member. So it was a true meritocracy where I sure. sort of worked my way up. And now I'm, I'm uh, pr helped propose the, uh, the SMART study, which is the one Steve referred to, with, where we look at whether multiple rods in you know, our patients will help reduce the risks of fracture of those rods. As we've looked at patients in adult deformity surgery, if you follow them out far enough, if you use two traditional rods, up to about 40% of those patients will experience a rod fracture. So that's almost 50-50 uh, chance, sure. which means often significant revision surgery. And so using extra rods can reinforce, but we just don't know if that's just delaying the inevitable. Yeah. So this is a really important study to look at the value of this uh, technique to try to reduce that complication. You know, I think a lot of people are looking at this and saying, this is amazing, you guys have been so productive, and you guys are looking at very sort of very clinically relevant studies. What's your advice to someone out there who's just a member, not, not involved yet? How do you get involved in a knowledge forum? Is there, what's the pathway to sort of getting involved? Um, well, there's, there's a few methods of getting in. First of all, to, uh, you know, hardworking uh, people that are interested, we're always welcome uh, to join as an associate. Uh, You'd be uh, given and a how term. How many associate members do you think you have? Just a ballpark estimate. Um, there's approximately 25 associate okay. members right now, and um, so there's really two methods. The other way is, is patients who are getting the um, uh, the awards from uh, AO for research, and so those automatically, uh, if they won an award for a research grant uh, through the AO spine. Uh, the deformity groups, for example, if it was a deformity project, they'll, our knowledge form would take over to help supervise that project and help you uh, bring that project to fruition. And those automatically have an associate position uh, for at least the duration of their project. And if uh, it looks like they'd be good to continue on, we'd love to have them continue on. But uh, we're a very approachable group. And uh, anybody interested that has a, a practice in deformity, uh, Generally, it's very helpful uh, if you have uh, research support at your base hospital. Uh, we, we'd love to uh, involve you in our projects and, and, and get you involved either with data interpretation through some of our projects or, or from involving you in uh, enrolling some of your patients into our studies. Yeah. And, w and with these AO studies and the knowledge forums, it's the resources behind it that AO provides, it's, it's incredible. Um, from, from the statisticians to the infrastructure for data collection and organizing of the data collection forms and all of, the, uh, all of that. It's, it's very difficult to do on your own and AO does it in an incredibly efficient manner that helps us be able to carry out these studies. Steve, can you give the audience a little idea of how productive you've been? I know it, I, I'm putting you on the spot with numbers and things like that. Um, how many presentations would you estimate? How many papers have you published that have come partially or wholly from the knowledge form? And I don't need the exact, I just need a ballpark. Well, uh, we probably look, we really strive on high quality projects. And uh, 
For example, our, we've won the, the Outstanding Paper Award at the SRS for our PEDS project. We've won it for our Scolieras project. And, and we're really uh, trying to maybe to shy away from volume, but to really hit high, high quality, high impactful studies. Uh, we, and we've had multiple presentations in different uh, committees. And unfortunately, I don't have the exact numbers sure. on you, but uh, our, our real focus is more on high, high quality, high impactful studies than, than actually total numbers. And Justin, you, you gave us your, earlier, you talked about your pathway and getting involved, and now you're the newest member of the steering committee. So it, there is hope for people out there that want to get involved, to get involved and actually ascend to the leadership of the Knowledge Forum. Yes, if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Well, I can tell you we're very fortunate to have someone uh, in ju of Justin's stature as part of our group, and, and that was, for us, we, were, we thought that was a really important addition for our group, and I think uh, people like Justin, uh, who we've added on, are, are tremendous additions, uh, and yeah. we'll keep the, the Knowledge Forum and, and, and the principles of the Knowledge Forum uh, going forward with a very positive impact in the future. Yeah, but it, it truly is a meritocracy. If you work hard and you have the passion, uh, to do to do the work and you do it well and you follow through, then that's your best chances of getting to become an associate and working your way up to the steering committee. It's truly a meritocracy. Great. Well, listen, I want to thank you both for taking the time and joining us, uh, and thank you for answering all these questions because I think it really educated the audience on what the knowledge forums are and gives them some insight on maybe how to get involved. So thank you guys so much. Okay, thanks a lot, Jeff. Yeah. And I want to thank the audience for joining us for GSC Live, and we look forward to seeing you at the next session. Thank you.